Before we talk about basic drawing techniques in Flash, we need to talk about Flash's two drawing models. There are two ways it will draw objects, either in object drawing mode or merge drawing mode. Object drawing mode will put the stroke and the fill together. The stroke is the outside border and the fill is the inside color. And merge drawing mode will put them together when it first draws them, but they're actually separate items that you can edit individually. When I move an object created in object drawing mode, both of them will move together no matter what. For merge drawing mode, if I click the fill and move it off, all of a sudden those are individual items. And even more, if I move it on top of the stroke and then deselect it, all of a sudden they start interfering or trying to merge with each other. There are some times that you want this to happen, and there are other times that this can cause a lot of problems for you. In general, you're going to be working with the object drawing mode. If you want to know more about these drawing models, then you need to watch the tutorial video that I've created called Drawing Models. I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer, and we're going to make sure we are in object drawing mode by choosing a drawing tool, and for right now I'm going to choose the oval, and I'm going to make sure this button down here called object drawing has been selected. That means that it's going to draw the strokes and the fills together, and they will always be one object. When drawing in Flash, it's very similar if you've wor ever worked with something like Illustrator or Photoshop. As soon as I draw it out on the stage, it draws the shape, but if I want to maintain the proportions and it's not squished or something like this, I can hold shift on my keyboard and that will maintain the proportions, and if I hold alt or option, it's going to spread from the center instead of spreading from the top right corner. So you're probably asking why in the world is this not a normal circle? I chose the oval tool. So what is happening there? Well, what it is, is that every single one of your tools has these options. So right now I've adjusted it so that my start, end, and inner radius have different properties to create this shape. I can do this with my rectangle tool as well. If it was on zero, it would create a regular rectangle shape. If, however, with that rectangle, I change this to 25, it would create rounded corners and just the opposite if I said negative 25. So play with these options because they're going to create some pretty unique shapes for you. For now, let's talk about how to actually create artwork for this animation. I'm going to create a background layer and I could change the actual stage color, but that'll change the entire HTML page when I want to publish it. So instead I like to draw a square shape for the background and I'm going to grab the rectangle tool, make sure that the options are back on zero. And I don't want to stroke for this, so I'll choose this white box with a red line through it. And I want the color to be a deep blue. I can draw that out on the stage and make sure that you're on the correct frame that you want this to go on. A good idea is to lock all your other layers to ensure that you're drawing your artwork where you want it to go. If I want this to be a little bit more customized, I don't like just the flat blue, I can come to the color panel and instead of choosing solid color, I'm going to choose linear gradient. And this allows me to create something that has maybe a black to a that blue color that I chose. And I can click on here and I can create even more color stops, double click on it, choose a color and that's going to create it. And then I can click and drag off. But that's not the part of this video that, that is necessarily that important. If I wanted to change the gradient though, I'm going to change this to 100% so I can see the outside edges. Go to the transform tool and underneath it I can see this gradient transform tool. So from here, I can rotate that gradient and get it the way I want it and squish it. And that's what I want for my scene right now. So I'll lock that layer and create a new one because it's very important in Flash to keep your objects separate on their own layers. So I'll call this star. And I'm going to go down to something called the poly star tool. This will draw polygons and stars. So go to tool settings and choose options. 
make sure it says star and this is where you can change the number of size the star point size but for right now we're just going to do a traditional regular star I'll change the fill color and maybe change the stroke color and that's a little bit too thick well let's just try it I'll go ahead and draw that on the stage and there's my star now after the fact after you draw something you can change a lot of the properties you can change its X and Y value so X is going to move it left and right and Y is up and down you can change the width and height and right now it's going to change both of them together because this link is working if I deselect that or if I click it so that it's a broken link I can stretch it this way but I'm going to undo that because I don't like that and I can change the stroke size and the stroke color and the fill color as long as this object is selected last thing I can do is free transform this and this allows me to rotate it until I get it where I want it so I want it to be perfectly up and down and there we go and don't forget to go back to the selection tool which allows you to click off an object and draw another one it's really important that you get used to always going back to the selection tool because if you have something selected and you think you're gonna go draw a new star and you want to change it maybe to a blue star all of a sudden it's gonna change that object because it's selected so get very used to deselecting something then going back to that drawing tool and drawing a second one